Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lower Season 2. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown of episode 13. This just premiered last night, super excited to talk about it. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. Also, I want to remind you guys, I'm sure most of you guys watch The Flash if you watch Superman Lois, but The Flash is back on tonight, and we're going to be doing my review and breakdown for the episode just afterwards. It's going to be out on my channel the next day in the afternoon, so please be sure to turn on notifications. That's important in order for you to get the video as soon as it releases, normally around 7 p.m. UK time. That is normally the time that I aim for, so translate that to wherever you are around the world. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode. So just first off, my overall thoughts on the episode. I thought this was a very, very strong episode. I thought all the storylines were interesting. Sometimes it was infuriating, it was annoying because of the specific choices and things that the characters say, but that's all intended on purpose. And I thought it was just like a really solid episode, definitely leading towards a conclusion that we are heading towards pretty damn soon so yeah let's go ahead so the episode begins with a flashback to five years ago showing Ali doing a speech and this speech is at a book signing for one of her new books about her theory and this is in fact where we see the return of Lucy Lane but more importantly the first meeting of the two and they instantly connect she convinces Lucy that she is somebody like in a couple of minutes, right after Lucy's told her everything, or at least, you know, the key bits about her relationship to her sister, basically how Lois is kind of like the mother of their relationship, and every time that she says, I love you, she feels like it's not actually true, like she can't believe it, and there's lots of different conflicts between the two of them that are rooted back to their childhood, and now it's just even bigger that they have grown up. And just before this, they actually cut to I think it was around like a month ago or so, but basically we have Lucy and the rest of Ali's kind of cult members who are inside this cabin that they all stay at. They actually leave and Lucy argues against them and they are basically like, we're gonna leave, we've had no explanation, where is Ali, like what are we gonna do, it's been a while. But a few of the adamant admirers of Ali, like Lucy, who is definitely the leader of the pack, want to stay and they stick around and so then we cut over to the present day and Superman wants to go back to Bizarro World to stop Ali but he won't go because of Lois. Lois won't let him because last time he went for months he nearly died and it was really hard to get back and it took such a long time that it's not worth the risk and also Ali doesn't have the pendant now so they think oh how can we actually go around this well let's wait until Ali attacks again and I'll try and stop her here. And so John Henry, while this is happening, finds out about Natalie's suit, and this is obviously a big dad moment, which we have seen many of, including in this episode, where the parents are basically becoming really protective of their children. And in this case, he's scared about Natalie, potentially going out there risking her life. He does not want her to do that, but he shortly finds out that she has made an even better suit than his suit. And she actually convinces him in this episode to go out and assist him in her new suit. So they've obviously come a long way from where they were at the start of the episode by the end, and it's great to see, to be honest. Okay, so Lana is mad at Kyle because he took Sarah to the bar. She finds out when she's at home, and Sarah is just watching over the footage from the night before and she's very happy about her singing, and she's excited to show her mum, but then she finds out I was at the bar, and she gets mad, and she kind of walks away. And this continues later, we'll go back to that in a minute, but we need to hop back to Clark, because chronologically speaking, this is what happens next. As Clark tells Jonathan and Jordan about Lana wanting the families to keep their distance, they're shocked, Jordan has his ideas, Jonathan is like, how can this actually happen, like, you do realise we go to school together, but they said, we're going to find a way and maybe this is best for the other family. We'll see how this storyline actually progresses over the next couple of episodes. I don't think we're going to get any conclusive answers about the future of the two families' relationships by the end of the season. I think next season is when we're going to truly explore this. So I think we're going to have to do some waiting. 
But in the meantime, Chrissy shows up for the first time in a while. She is kind of annoying, as ever, but however, she does save the gang at the end, thankfully by calling the DoD, which notifies John Henry Irons to save Superman and to also save General Lane from Ali. So, you know, there is some good in her showing up again. But basically, at the start, she's very adamant that she wants to get involved in Lane family business with them trying to find Lucy. But she gets only so far before being trapped in the car by General Lane, by orders of him. But yeah, let's move on. Bizarro world. Ali is back there. She's speaking to the whole world with some not so good CGI from Paris with a double Eiffel Tower, which actually looked kind of cool. But I'm just talking like the first shot when she was on TV, you could tell. That wider shot was a definite CGI shot, but then when it was close up on her and it was just, you know, sharp on her face and the background was all kind of bouquet and blurred out, that actually looked pretty cool. So it was kind of a mix, but it was interesting to see the world again and to see, you know, a different aspect of the society. They hopped around from different cities around the world where she was talking to them on, like, the screens of Times Square and wherever else they were. And so she announces she's going to merge both worlds together, like the entire world, not just all the people, but both worlds. So that is crazy. That is like crisis level in terms of, you know, how big this could be for both worlds, because they are going to be sandwiched together. Like, how is that going to affect the specific people? Obviously, they're going to merge, but the buildings, are they going to like half merge together? It's going to be weird. Anyway, so Lois and General Lane show up at Lucy's barn that we saw her in earlier in the episode. He handcuffs himself to Lucy while Lois explains how the pendant was destroyed and how Ali has become this new sort of parasite, siphoning people's life and powers. And this is on display shortly after this. But back at the Kent family farm, we have Jonathan and Clark who have a heart to heart. It's a very nice conversation between the two of them. I really felt for Jonathan. And basically, it just confirms there's a future for Jonathan, despite everyone kind of being against him for a while in this season. And he's making amends, so there is definitely a path for him to become different, unlike his bizarre world doppelganger. But while Clark is talking to Jonathan, we have Jordan who confronts Lana. And this scene was just, like, probably the most, like, intense, I feel, of the whole episode, even above, like, the fight scenes, because this was, like... A true confrontation especially from Lana's side because Lana goes off against Jordan in a kind of mean way I was very shocked but I understand that she's mad and she doesn't want any of this to actually affect Sarah but she goes on to say Sarah will never be safe if you're a part of her life after he's confessed like many times that Jordan loves her and everything like that and I understand where Lana is coming from but I also understand where Jordan's coming from and after this fight we have Clark who finds Jordan just sitting on the bench in the city after Jonathan has tipped off about Jordan and what he was planning to do and obviously they have like a mini conversation and he realizes oh this is just how it's going to be and he sees Lana's side but he still thinks you know that was a bit harsh like I do and obviously that was probably how a lot of you guys felt as well but we go back to another flashback actually and this goes back to the five years ago so right at the start of the episode again where we see Lucy Lane who is moving into a new apartment she has a job she's not living on the streets with her backpack now Ali is with her and she wants to tell and sway Lois towards the direction that Lucy is in. But Lucy is pretty clear that she thinks that would never happen based on how she knows Lois. And Lois is always adamant about trying to show her own way and basically being right. And it's revealed Lucy has always trusted Ali since the very start, since five years ago. But Ali has definitely been manipulating her this whole time as evidenced by her attacking her dad at the end of the episode, despite promising to never hurt anyone. And so Jordan actually gets trained by Clark right after that bench scene, and they go out near the fortress in the middle of the ice, and he's teaching Jordan how to fly out on the ice. He says, you have to let go of your fear, and at that point, Jordan lets go of his fear. He jumps off the side of the cliff, down the ravine, and he's falling for a long time. I thought it looked kind of cool, like the CGI was pretty decent. 
and he falls so far, you're like, what's going to happen? Is Clark going to have to save him? Clark doesn't even go down, but instead waits for Jordan to tap into his mind, tap into what he is truly feeling and let go of that fear and actually take off and fly. And finally, Jordan's able to do that and he flies off and he is screaming. Clark is screaming. Clark's reaction was definitely priceless. And when he gets back down after failing to land properly, and they do it a couple more times off screen afterwards, Clark has to save him. They hop down, they start screaming because it's like the first time he's properly flown and actually hasn't like done it by accident or something, but he's actually like focused and he can now do it. And that's going to be a thing that's going to come into fruition probably next episode and into the last couple of episodes of the season as. The cliffhanger of this episode is with Superman being weakened by a lot, potentially turning normal, and so they are going to have to step up, and Jordan is definitely going to have to step up as Superboy. And so, let's go back to Lucy and Lois. They have another argument. This is an ongoing thing that we've had throughout this whole season, because, you know, there's this constant back and forth between them, because they have this very frictional relationship, and... You know, in the middle of that is General Lane, their dad, who is adamant that he loves both of them, has always loved both of them, and they are the two best things in his life, and he admits like he wasn't the best dad, but they don't actually blame him, they blame their mum leaving, and Lucy obviously blames Lois for treating her the way that she did, and Lois reveals that she sees Lucy as her life raft for when she was younger, and if it wasn't for Lucy, and actually having to kind of bring her up, she wouldn't be the person that she is today, and she's learned a lot more by having her kids of herself, and she just thought she had to act in a certain way when she was younger, protecting her sister, and so she's still trying to prove that she loves Lucy, and this definitely comes through in the episode, and this has come through the whole season. It feels a little bit repetitive, I will admit it. However, the issues are still continually growing, but they always seem like they kind of get resolved and then they bounce backwards. But I think this time is the one point where Ali has taken it a step too far. And I think Lucy is going to start siding with Lois after what happens in the next scene. So they all rush outside to see Ali flying down from the sky. So she returns to the base of her cult where they have all been hiding out in this barn, in this cabin, in the middle of the woods. And so she comes down, her eyes are glowing, it's clear that she's got her superpowers, and what Lois and General Lane have told them is in fact true, that the pendant has been destroyed, and at that point, Ali reveals that she intends to emerge both worlds, and to do that, she needs Superman, because he has so much power, and she needs to harness that power. And so the big question here is, will Lucy go through with it? Will she stay on Ali's side? And will she call Superman and so Lois refuses to tell Ali where Superman is and basically tells her you got to kill me before you do that so you know do what you got to do but Lucy is going to you know side against you if you kill me because you know at the end of the day they are sisters and so she goes on to actually attack General Lane and she literally siphons his life force and that kind of sets off Lucy and Lucy in an instant calls Superman not sure if it was for Ali, it kind of was for Ali, but it was more to kind of get her off away from her dad. And so Superman comes, Ali sees him in the sky, she drags him down with her parasite powers, and Ali drains his power. At this point, John Henry and Natalie are notified by the DoD call from Chrissy that I previously discussed at the start of the video. And so with them two fully suited up, with Natalie in her new suit, they show up, and John gets knocked out of the sky instantly by throwing his hammer, but she's able to stop it, that being Ali, and she flings it back at him and he goes flying off. Obviously, it doesn't do too much damage because he's able to come back, and Clark is actually completely drained. He looks like Bizarro. His life is almost completely gone, and Natalie tries to save his life just in the nick of time, which she does and they take off General Lane to the DoD as well, and whilst this is happening, the rest of the cult has run away because they're scared of the power that Ali possesses, and obviously she's kind of betrayed all of them, and she's betrayed Lucy, Lucy's in shock, 
and she even reveals like in the DOD later with her dad that she had it all wrong and that it's become clear that he's always been there for her and Ali has been manipulating her all this time. Well she doesn't outright admit that but she kind of admits it's what's inferred by what she says. So this is definitely a huge turning point for this season in terms of Ali's support it seems now she's going to be isolated. And the big question is, how the hell are they going to stop her? She is all powerful and Superman is literally trained. He's a normal human now. And so they're all going to have to step up, that being Superman's allies. So Superboy is going to be there. Natalie's going to be helping out. John Henry Irons, General Lane with the DOD and anything that they can do, they are going to have to do. And potentially Jonathan could suit up in some sort of suit made by Natalie. And so Lana Rowe is called upon by Ali in Bizarro World to finish off Superman and come to our world. So we're going to see the evil version of Superwoman, that's just what we've been calling her, coming to try and kill Superman in the next episode, I would presume. And so Ali, at the end of the episode, literally combines and pulls the two worlds together. And I was like shocked at this moment because how is that possible? Like this is crisis level stuff. It looked great and I get that she's powerful and that she can do this. But by having the two worlds be so close, how is she in this kind of split dimension where she can see both of them? I don't know. It just doesn't make much sense. I would have presumed she would have combined them by standing on one world or like, you know, flying from the edge of one world and you wouldn't see the literal merging of the two worlds, but I guess that's what we're getting. And it looks really cool, but it kind of doesn't make physical sense because they are alternate versions of each other. They are from across the multiverse rather than being two neighboring planets because that's what it looked like in the CGI in the shot. And yeah, that is obviously a big place and a big cliffhanger to leave us with before the next episode because we're going to figure out what is going on and Superman is near to his death, General Lane's okay, his skin apparently isn't impenetrable anymore and Clark's cells look normal. He has lost his Kryptonian DNA, he's lost his powers and it seems he is a human. So. What's going to be happening? I don't know. There is so much that could be going on. But for now, if you did enjoy the video, that is about it. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.